Strange Playgrounds, written by George Daniel Lee. Bound. Audio presentation by Stephen Kelly. What was it they chanted as their ridiculous little box, this mouse trap they'd constructed, began its corrosive work? A name. One he'd never thought to hear again this side of the grave. Wellman. 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 How they knew, after he'd taken such pains to expunge it from record, was irrelevant. The knowledge lent them power over one who dominated, oppressed, and preyed upon them. There wasn't a single soul outside these walls who entertained the slightest iota of mercy, nor did he expect it. The trap was a device of ancient design, its kind not seen in the world since the rediscovery of miracles, the scientific approbation of the abstract, the mythic element that tradition called the soul. How many generations of their young had they sacrificed in its making? Three. Four. He could already feel the teeth and fingers of their furious, barely-born souls. The madness that informed them, born of lives dreamt in the womb, then wickedly, monstrously denied before they could even draw breath. Poison. A rabidity that threatened to infect him with every tainted nip and scratch. It wouldn't be long before he lost all hold over the self he'd sculpted. The living ideal whose flesh was as protean as shadow. Thoughts infinite as time. Almost funny. Even liberated from the restrictions of his original humanity, he retained enough of the state for his perfection to be polluted. Doubt and delusion clouding his sight. Nothing lasted forever. Not stories, not love, and certainly not him. The chanting became more fervent, more vicious, as he flung his withering carcass from wall to wall, each impact perpetuating a release of energies that briefly illuminated his cell's interior. By the standards of its builders, it was no doubt palatial. A tomb citadel on par with the pyramids of Giza that none now living remembered. There'd be no rebirth into eternal life for this pharaoh. He'd seen what awaited outside this world of flesh and sensation. A state beyond all the frantic, fantastical hopes of religion or the material nihilism of science. Why else would he devote his entire being to suspending himself here, rewriting the unseen schematics of his flesh to better reflect the soul it contained? The fact he'd become a thing of darkness, a fairy tale horror that stalked the night, preying upon the flesh of the innocent, had concerned him at first. But such picayune moral qualms soon faded when he'd begun to realize the potential of his reconfigured state. No, he could not, would not die here. Wounds blossomed throughout his phantasmal anatomy as he hurled it against the walls, floor, and ceiling the matter they shed momentarily luminous as moonlight before evaporating into wisps of silvery smoke. The meat things outside were whipped into frenzies of delight at his desperation, many shrieking curses that grazed him like thrown blades, whilst others sang hymns from the myriad religions he'd murdered since his ascendance. The words meant nothing, the language a distorted mockery of one long since dead. Where had it resprung from? Was it possible that the faith to which it belonged wasn't quite so dead as he surmised? And if so, how could it have proliferated so rampantly without his notice? He screamed in answer to the songs, his voice that of many thousands raised in unison, the walls of his prison trembling despite his current weakness. Some faltered as their thoughts filled with visions of what he would gift or spare them if they set him free. These were quickly set upon and silenced by their fellows, the certainties they'd been conditioned with proving an immaculate wall in which he could find neither floor nor foothold. The irony was almost enough to bring a smile to his lips. Whatever god, saint or messiah inspired their devotion, it was nothing but a distortion of the original man or myth as likely to turn on and devour them as he had. Distortion or no, 
It was that very faith which tightened like a noose around his throat. A mythology he would no doubt be subsumed into as demon or devil, the quintessential enemy he'd cast himself as, in hope that drawing the species' collective hate would prevent it from destroying itself. Too late, he realized the folly of his ambition. How woefully he'd underestimated humanity's urgency to kill and be killed. By tomorrow, the divisions would have already begun, one proclaiming his own perspective as canon, whilst others that shared common vision attempted to silence him. From there, the fractures would spread, gradually dividing a species he'd united through common fear and hatred, until all he'd created over the millennia was undone. His mythic substance tangibly unraveling, the monster once named Wellman sank down to the lowest recesses of its tomb, raised the separating mass of its face to the heavens, 